So, if you don't mind, can we start at the beginning? How did the idea for this show come about? It seems to be this elaborate like, mystery. How, how, did, how was it, the idea initially conceived? I mean, I wish I had a better answer, but I, I you know, like, because it's, it's like a boring one, but it, it's, uh, um, I've been obsessed with puzzles and treasure maps and all that stuff, like a huge Goonies fan. Like, I love National Treasure more than a grown adult should and stuff. So I, I've wanted to do a show like this for a very, very long time. And it's just been, like, kind of percolating in the back of my brain for, like, four or five years trying to, like, just figure it out. Because um, they're really, really hard to do <laughs> and, and make them sustainable on a network kind of TV show. And then and then on top of that, I came, you know, the image the, of the teaser just came to me one morning, you know, because uh, I was, I lived in Times Square when there was the Viacom, uh, you know, uh, bombing, basically, or the attempted bombing at Viacom, and so I'd seen it cleared out in the bomb team, and it's such a great image that it's always stayed with me, and I just thought one morning, I was like, well, what if, what if instead of a bomb, there was a woman inside that bag, and then, and then I was like, well, how would, and then I was like, she was probably left for someone, I was like, well, what if she had, like, the name of an FBI agent tattooed on her back, and then I was like, well, what if she had way more <laughs> tattooed on her back, like, what if there's a whole treasure map? on her back and then I was like well what if it should be her old body really and then um, and then I was like oh this is great and I just kind of went from there so just one quick follow up to that that's uh, it, that's a lot, how a lot of ideas come about but I'm wondering now that you've got it all started mm -hmm. do you have an end point in yeah. mind do you have an end point in mind it's impossible to do these things without end points mm -hmm. you know um, and the, the reality is you know uh, I think people have been burned by shows like this so many times and, and uh, on both the audience and the network side and so when you pitch a network now you know, like you don't, like I, it's a, like a one hour pitch when you're like, here's my idea for a TV show. And only about 10, minute of it, 10 minutes of it is the actual pilot that you're being paid to write. The rest of it is like what's actually going on. So they need, they want to know in that meeting that you know what, what's happening. And so, yeah, no, I mean, like we have, you know, we're, we just got our back nine picked up, which is fantastic. But we've been planning the season like it had a back nine. We've been planning the season like it, what it goes for several years. So it's like, there are, we know what, we knew what episode 22 was, you know, on the first day of the writer's room. And so we've been writing towards that. And then we know what the second season is about. We know, you know, so it's like, it's important to have that. Because again, shows like these, it's like, it's so easy for them to feel like all middles as well. Do you know what I mean? Where it's just like, it's like a rad pilot. And you're like, oh man, I'm so in. And then you just get like these little breadcrumbs all the way through the season maybe something towards like the, at the season finale but for us we don't like breadcrumbs we're like it's like whole loaves mm. of stuff every episode so uh so yeah speaking of which um i'm i'm always fascinated to see why some shows work and some don't mm -hmm. and i'd like to hear your perspective because this is like the highest rated new drama i have no idea <laughs> Because um, we go, you know, we cover shows like this all the time at Comic Con. Some of them last maybe two or three yeah. seasons. Others flame out like in the first season. Yeah. And a lot of people think this will last, you know, for at least three seasons. So, what do you think? In terms of like the fan response, I'm sure you've seen things on social media. Oh, it's um, overwhelming. Besides the marketing, which was excellent for the show, but in terms of why people are connecting so well and so quickly with this show. Well, you know, I think this show is what network television does really, really well. You know, it's a big, loud, fun show. It's got great character drama. It's got fantastic production value. But it also has that kind of like week to week puzzle excitement that, you know, like cable and binge watching and stuff like that is great. But there is something fun about like, you know, there's nothing more satisfying and frustrating as an audience for like that final moment when it cuts to black and you're like, oh, no, they, oh, God, I got to watch next week. And then like the fun of like the, the like talking about it with your friends all week and like trying to figure it out. And like, you know, we try to engage people online as much as possible, both the cast and the writers, you know, we're up for getting into discussions about stuff. So um, I don't know. But at the end of the day, you know, these things are binary. Like we we felt really good about the show. Um, I think NBC did an extraordinary job marketing it. I mean, like, we have a good time slot. Like, all of those things really help. But why people connect to shows, I think I think it's a couple of things. I th again, it's I think it's really fun in a time when people want to have some fun. And um, I think it feels slightly unique, even though it's pretty familiar. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, I, I you can't discount the fact that, like, we have... <coughs> one of the best casts in television, you know? And uh, and also, on top of that, there aren't a lot of, like, kick-ass women on TV right now, and um, uh, it's really nice to see, 
you know, I think women not be the victim all the time in an action hour and have them kick a little ass as well. So I think, but again, I don't know. It's like, is that why or is that why? I'm just happy that it connected. <laughs> you, you talked a minute ago about how you have it all mapped out, you know, episode 22. Nonetheless, as you're producing the show week to week and the yeah. actors bring whatever they're bringing, what kind of ways have things evolved maybe you weren't expecting to do as in the game? Um, well, you know, certainly uh, where you have wiggle room is with the characters, right? And so, um, uh, like, we know the backstory is pretty solid, and so that we can't really mess around with too much. But, um, but yeah, no, what's, what's so fun about writing a TV show over, like, a feature film is, like, as... I get to know the writers and the, or as I get to know the actors and the writers get to know the actors that you know both their their you know their incredible strengths and their very small weaknesses you can start to write towards like what they're great at and um, uh, and you start to incorporate them into the show a little bit you know and so that's that's really fun and they've all brought so much I mean it's it's been they they're they're really fantastic and I'm, I'm very I'm a very lucky showrunner yeah do you know what every tattoo signifies um, or have you there's a there's a there's an enormous amount that have been planned out. There are some tattoos on her body that are um, specifically generic, so that if I get into trouble <laughs> and need to call an audible about something, that I can use those tattoos as like, oh gosh, we need to do this, or like, oh my god, you know, if this person can't be on the show anymore for whatever reason, or they like, I have to like make a change. So there's some like, uh, there's some like uh, get out of jail free tattoos on her body <laughs> that'll like help me tell the story as we go for hopefully a bunch like, of years. All mapped out in the writers' room, like, is there? A, yeah, there's a, you know, like a silhouette of her body with all. The and it's not there. a silhouette. We have more pictures of naked women in our writers' room than most shows legally are allowed to have. Yeah, it's. A, I was like, Jamie could never come into this room. Like, it's just all, it's just all giant po photos of the tattoos and and uh, and Jamie's, you know, Jamie's body. And so, yeah, no, I mean, they're they're pretty they're pretty mapped out. What's the tattoo process, the makeup artist process for her? And I mean, is there going to come a point where she's just wearing a lot of turtlenecks so we don't have to? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, she's so. Uh, I mean, like, if it was anyone else, it would be very very difficult. But Jamie is so gung ho. Jamie wants more tattoos. She never wants less tattoos. Like, she's just like, because the thing is, it's like, you know, it's so rare in your career both for all of us to have something that connects so hard and like you know when we Jamie and I went to the San Diego Comic Con the show hadn't even aired yet and people were like cosplaying the character you know so it's like to be a part of something that is iconic like that is kind of that's a once in a career thing so she really leans into it she's a huge fan I mean she's so bummed she can't be here she really is pretty sick um, but she like you know this is she's a fan first and an actress second and so she knows like the show can't put her in turtlenecks all the time so, um, but that being said, we How try to make... the process? I mean, is she... It's about an hour and a half a day for the regular look. It's like three and a half hours when she wears a tank top and seven and a half hours for the full body. So it's, it's pretty... It's a lot of time. It's like she's playing an alien on TV. Like, it's... She goes through prosthetics every day. Yeah. Can you tell us about the casting process? What was the easiest and hardest role to cast? Um, you know what? They were all easy. I, I, I said this before. Uh, this never happens on, on TV. Is uh, I got my first choice for all seven characters. You know, so that's like it's, uh, it's unreal. It's unreal. And so, and what's fun about how the show continues is you suddenly have more and more time for um, uh, uh, for the other characters. Like right now, it's been very Jane and Weller heavy. But as of episode four, we really get to know a lot more about Patterson. We get into uh, is Zapata and Reed's life, Mayfair, so it's like the show will start to grow into an ensemble drama with this central mystery at its core. Um, did, have any of that, so you got your first choice for everybody, have any of the actors brought something to the character that you didn't expect and you've been surprised by, specifically Ashley's character providing some comic relief, yeah. was that planned or how, how did that all work out? I mean, Ashley's character is the one that's gone through the greatest metamorphosis, I think, from, like, original conception to, like, second episode. Um, you know, uh, Ashley and I are uh, terribly similar. We, we have very similar senses of humor. And, and so to have someone, you know, like, w when we first started just even hanging out during the pilot, everyone was like, oh, my God, you guys are terrifyingly... <laughs> Like, we have, we think the same stuff is funny. So, but that's great to have someone on to have, you know, that has that sensibilities in the show, because then I can write to it. And, and certainly what I thought, the only, like one of my 
only problems with the pilot is I wish it would have been funnier. And so to be able to introduce a ton of humor through the Patterson character, you know, I think Rob is like hilarious as well. Like everyone can tell jokes. So so certainly, but certainly, yeah, Patterson's character was like originally supposed to be much older, and uh, uh, and um, and so like you know in her fifties, and when and so but we were having trouble finding them, and then Ashley came in and gave such a great read that we were like, oh. I was like, I'm going to rewrite this character. Ashley, it's got to be Ashley. And so, um, and it's kind of that for all of them, you know? Like, when you cast somebody, it, it stops being, like, an abstract thing and becomes concrete. And so, you know, having someone like, for instance, having Marianne John Baptiste on the show is like, forget it. It's crazy. So, and, you know, when I, when I met with her, I was like, I promise I will write you great stuff. If you come to the show, I will write you great stuff. You won't have to just be an exposition machine every week. I, you have great stuff. And so, and, you know... I kept my promise. She's got great stuff coming up, I think. Especially her and this character, Carter, which we just met at the end of episode three, where uh, if you come to the... We're showing, like, a little bit of a sizzle reel for the first part of the season. Um, you'll see that he's... Carter's kind of the big bad of the of the, of the the season, and um, Marianne's got a ton of stuff with him, so... How yeah. hard is tattoo continuity? Pardon me? How hard is tattoo continuity on this show, in the sense of making sure that week to week that... They're the same. Tats match, yeah. Oh well, they were, it's it's a uh, it's a very complicated application process, but they're they're the same every time. No, no, no. It's basically like rub-on tattoos, but the professional ones. So they're they they come printed out as giant sheets, and they mold to her, they're molded to her body. So it's like it's not like we draw them on every time. They're they're actually like they're they're semi permanent, and they take a lot to get off. And yeah, no, absolutely. What is it about being... Uh, By the way, I love your... Uh, uh-huh. I hope you're cosplaying. If not, you have just a great sense of style. Just, I just have this in my closet. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Last question, please. What is it about being a showrunner that, um, like before, and you didn't know you had to do, or like, what are some duties that uh, maybe not every know, not everybody knows a showrunner has to do for a show? Um, well, you know, I think, you know, on a first season show, uh, you're kind of the... You know, you're the obviously like you know you supply like the final yes and no on everything, but also it's just like it's keeping making sure the mood is good, making sure people have fun. The the job that everyone is doing here is like exhausting. It's like really really difficult. The hours are long. It's six seven days a week sometimes. You know, with fight training and you know all that stuff. So I I think it's just like um, uh, it, the, your job first and foremost is like maintain the sense of fun and play even at like you know 5 a.m on a friday night or a saturday morning and and everyone's just like i want to go home but thankfully also like it's your job to make sure the episodes turn out good so that when people are exhausted they can go home monday night and watch the show and be like oh shit no okay it's worth it (laughs) um i don't know that's a dumb answer i guess also can you uh, possibly share if you have any any updates on uh, what's definitely yes um, Jonathan and I wrote a Bored to Death movie um, uh, about a year ago, year and a half ago, and um, I think it's really good. It's just, it's seemingly, it's pretty unlikely, I think, right now. Um, uh, uh, you know, I think, I think he, we may, you know, he might, we might, th- he might throw that out. We, he might just like try writing a whole new one. But he's terribly busy on uh, on Blunt Talk yes. right now on Stars. He's got another season of that. Jason's doing Mozart in the Jungle. Zach's got Baskets coming up on FX. You know, and Ted is like Ted, so he's yeah. busy all the time. So, but it's something we'd all love to do. We're all still very close. We all still t- like we're shooting um, uh, Blind Spot in the old Board to Death stage on, in, in in Brooklyn. And so it's like, yeah, no, it's bittersweet because I would love, we would all love to do some more. That's a great show. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, guys, great. Thanks so much. Have a great Comic-Con.